Clinton, one of the most controversial figures in American life, is once again heading toward freedom. O.J. Simpson was granted parole today after spending nearly nine years in prison for a botched robbery, an attempt, he says, to reclaim sports memorabilia that was rightfully his. Now, with his release coming as soon as October, ABC's Deborah Roberts speaks to some of the other men involved in that crime. O.J. Simpson about to become a free man. Capturing the nation's attention once again. Tonight, O.J. Simpson will be a free man. Granted parole after serving nearly nine years behind bars for kidnapping and robbery. An emotional sigh from the former football great. Thank you. Making a lengthy plea. What were you thinking? I thought I was glad to get my stuff back, but it wasn't worth it. I'm sorry. The 70 year old inmate seen for the first time in four years. He seemed to relitigate the 10-year-old crime with a flash of anger. So you believe that the property was yours? It's been ruled legally by the state of California that it was my property and they've given it to me. But at other times, remorseful. I haven't made any excuses in the nine years that I've been here. And I'm not trying to make an excuse now. They were there because of me. He was convicted in 2008. Guilty. Count two. And has Guilty. been serving a 9 to 33 year sentence here at Lovelock Correctional Facility in Nevada. I've done my time. You know, I've done it as well and as respectfully as I think anybody can. No one really knows how much we have been through. His oldest daughter, Arnell, emotional, speaking on behalf of the family. He's like my best friend and my rock. To have that human element of someone who really seemed to be speaking from the heart definitely helped. But I think much of this for O.J. Simpson was for the court of public opinion. Then the first tears from Simpson as one of his victims, Bruce Fromong, made a plea on his behalf. This is a good man. He made a mistake. And if he called me tomorrow and said, Bruce, I'm getting out, will you pick me up? Juice, I'll be here tomorrow for you. I mean that, but... Simpson with tears of gratitude. I think the parole commissioners had probably made their decision before he walked in the door. So he would have had to have done something really bad to change those opinions. Simpson never far from the limelight. His life mired in controversy, forever remembered for the trial of the century. You must acquit. Not guilty of the crime of murder. Accused, then acquitted of murdering ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. Simpson's pending release brought fresh pain to the family of Ron Goldman, who spoke out on Good Morning America. What's troubling to me is not only him, but the whole system gives second chances to violent felons, or for that matter, anyone in jail. Ron doesn't get a second chance. Simpson was ordered to pay the Goldman and Brown families $33.5 million after being found liable in the civil trial. The Goldman say they've received less than 1% of that. Simpson's always denied any involvement in those deaths. O.J. Simpson will likely be released in October and may move back to Florida to be near his children. If granted, corrections officials there said in a statement today, he will be assigned to a Florida probation officer and will be supervised in accordance with the conditions of his parole. Simpson still earns an NFL pension estimated at $25,000 a month, but it's protected under federal law. The Goldmans cannot get access to it. It is simply not an asset that they can seize. Looking back on what sent him to prison, Simpson says it was a series of unfortunate events, the perfect storm. September 13, 2007, O.J. Simpson is in Vegas for the wedding of pal Tom Scotto. He was more excited for me to get married than I was. And he's gotten a tip from sports collector Tom Riccio that some of his lost and treasured personal memorabilia will also be in Las Vegas, items his former agent allegedly took in lieu of payment. Poolside at the Palms Resort, Simpson strategizes a play to score back his stuff. He says to me, uh, I need someone that I could trust to go up there or go and see what it is. Charlie Ehrlich, a Miami strip club promoter, agrees to pose as a buyer. So I said, OJ, listen, for you, I'm going to do this. Ehrlich leaves, and Simpson's former golfing buddy, Walter Alexander, joins in, too. Riccio left, and then all of a sudden, the conversation got serious. What was the plan? What did OJ say he wanted to do? When he approached me about it, he was like, hey, man, will you watch my back? So I said yes, and then after I said yes, he leaned in a little closer and he said, by the way, can you get some heat? 
meaning okay, a gun. The meaning a gun. And when he said that, I hesitated. While he hesitates, someone else speaks up. Michael McClinton, a friend from the Los Angeles nightclub scene. And at the time, he ran a security company and had a concealed carry permit. He asked me, would you go with me to be my security? Sure, I'll go with you. Little did I know that it was going to turn into what it did. Well, after he did that, I look at OJ and I say, so OJ, what if they call the police? And he looked at me and he used a four-letter word that starts with F and ends with K, the police. What they're going to do, take me to jail for taking my own stuff? The stage is set. 6.30 p.m., Simpsons recruited three people. Riccio, the go-between, heads north to the Palace Station Hotel to link with the memorabilia dealers. They're captured on the hotel security cameras, bringing in the hall. We took the memorabilia down to the room, set it all up for this supposed buyer that was coming in. On the way to the palace, Simpson recruits two more buddies, including C.J. Stewart. He gets in the car and he says what? Man, I got 15 minutes to get there. You don't even have to get out the vehicle. Just please don't leave me there. Ehrlich and another pretend buyer head in first. Two seconds later. I look down the hallway, I see OJ, this guy Clarence Stewart, who I met an hour and a half ago. These two black guys who look like they're out of Miami Vice, slick back hair, Versace glasses, suits. I go, who the are these guys? Excuse my French. And I said, oh boy, this is, this is a typical OJ move, I'm saying to myself. For the first time since that night, McClinton walks back into the Palace Station Hotel. It's undergoing significant renovation. Who's sort of in charge of the plan? Mr. Simpson is in charge. What did he say? Well, he just said that we were going to wait for some guys. The group now all together. No one knew anybody. It was like going to the good fight at the OK Corral. No introductions as they head into room 1203. We all barged into the room. The guys in the room were shocked to see Mr. Simpson. I seen this guy getting ready to go up under the mattress. First thing went to my mind, it was a firearm. Next thing, Simpson, you could hear his voice coming in. Man, you can steal my <laughs> cell phone. Don't let nobody out of here. This is actual audio of Simpson from inside that room, secretly recorded by Riccio. It would later be critical evidence in the courtroom. It was stated that I pointed the gun. I never pointed that gun at anybody. I did take my gun out for one, like, split second. And when I realized that the room was safe, I just put it back in. The minute I pulled the gun out, I'm like, man, this is a robbery. You know, this is going to be on national news. You are going to jail for this. Nine hulking men crammed into a small room. So OJ says, pack up all the stuff and let's get out of here. They grab everything in sight and stuff them into pillowcases from the bed. I actually went and snatched the cord of the foam out of the wall and I took Bruce's cell phone. Why did you take his cell phone? Because I didn't want him to call the police. So you leave the room. Yes. What are you thinking at that point? that we just did a robbery. But Simpson isn't phased as they head back to the Palms Hotel. Unbeknownst to him, the memorabilia dealer, Alfred Beardsley, finds a phone and calls the cops. Yeah, we were just robbed at gunpoint by O.J. Simpson. Can you send the police here, please? Where are you? Palace Station Hotel in Las Vegas. We just robbed by O.J. Simpson and four other black men at gunpoint. I need to know who we're looking for. Four black men and O.J. Simpson is not enough. I'm going to need to know what they were wearing. Frustrated by that 911 call, the dealers try reporting Simpson in the lobby, as seen here on the hotel surveillance cameras. But still, no one believes them. Later, back at the Palms, Simpson and crew continue their pre-wedding celebrations over dinner at the Little Buddha restaurant. OJ was there laughing. He just thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> he has no idea that Michael McClinton is secretly recording this conversation. <laughs> In all that time, O.J. is thinking, no big deal. O.J. is You're not going to be drunk. arrested. He just, you know, kept saying, no guns. Just say there wasn't guns. The next day, police find and question Simpson. But he's not arrested and goes on to be best man at Tom Scotto's wedding. The wedding day went perfect. O.J. was in great spirits. But those high spirits would soon fall. Boom, right after the wedding, they pick him up. 
they lock him up. One by one, Simpson and his accomplices are arrested, making national headlines. O.J. Simpson is under arrest in Las Vegas. In connection with an alleged armed robbery. Police nab Alexander at the airport, searching his bag for that suit he was wearing in the surveillance tape. When you go to the casino, you're filmed from the minute you go in the door. Did it not occur to you all that there's a camera here? There's cameras here, camera, there's cameras all over this place. That wasn't on my mind, and I'm sure it wasn't on the other guy's mind either.